What's going on YouTube? This is Luke with Endless Entrepreneurs coming to you with a live video here Saturday night. It is about 10 p.m. Eastern. It is way past my bedtime, but uh, as the topic shows in the title, I just thought it was a great opportunity in mid-month April to talk about slow Easter weekend sales, slow April sales in general. I mean, if, uh, if you are a reseller on eBay, I think you're probably feeling it right now. If you are new to my channel, I am a part-time eBay seller. Uh, and I would say a very serious part-time eBay seller, and I work full-time as a corporate finance analyst. Um, I've been documenting my journey as an entrepreneur and as an eBay seller for uh, quite a few months now, and I have a pretty big goal of selling $100,000 of gross sales this year. Uh, so from the title, obviously, you can tell that slow April sales is alarming to me as I'm trying to reach my goal for sure. Um, but it definitely isn't something that I am panicking about. Um, so also, as you can see from the title, Casey, uh, the Rockstar Flipper, should be joining me here shortly. Uh, this is a very impromptu video, but I thought it was an appropriate topic here mid-month. I've seen a lot of other resellers talking about this and struggling with this. And you know, it's definitely a mentality. Um, are you a Oops, sorry investor? guys, a little bit of a rookie there with my, uh, not meeting my feed here. Um, but it's definitely a mentality that a lot of resellers struggle with and myself included. So I thought it was a great time just to be an open book about what's going on. Um, you know, one thing that uh, I'm experiencing right now specifically is that I am not, I, I went 36 hours without having a single sale. <laughs> Um, and that for me was just mentally debilitating. Um, and it was really hard. Oh, there's Casey. How are we doing? Oh, man? there we go. I'm just kidding. I just messaged Luke and told him he's crazy. He didn't send me an invite to the chat. <laughs> just kidding. I got it. Tech rockstar technical difficulties. It's okay. <laughs> I, don't, I don't hold it against you. Hey, please don't because I'm the worst technical guy ever. <laughs> Some people would, would question how I could possibly make a video every day. I can't even figure out how to turn things on sometimes, okay? So, so as appropriate with this topic, topic uh, I have a glass of vodka. I have some Red Bull and vodka, so we are on the same page. All right. So listen, is, listen, you guys, I have told everyone on my YouTube channel, and hi to all of Luke's awesome viewers, if this is your first time on Luke's channel, curse you. For all you returning people, awesome job. Please keep coming back. Um, but I have told everybody, I get hard time on my live chats about it. I always have something to drink, and they're like, is that Jack and Coke? And I'm like, guys, it's Tuesday night. It is Saturday night, and yes, this is Red Bull and vodka, and with no sales, you need it. Once a week, it is required. <laughs> yes, I, I, I cheers to that, and I agree with that. And if you have not, <laughs> you have not seen his channel, channel, please, please uh, check him out. Check him out. Flipper, flipper. <laughs> Sounds like I'm back. I'm gonna plug in some. Am I am I reverbing? It it could be me. It could be me. If it's me, if tell you me. Have not, you have not been to channel, channel, please uh, check. One second. Let's, one second. Let's 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 oh, wait. I just muted the chat. It might have been me. My bad. I think we're good now. I think, I think, it, was, I think it, was it was me. Oh, I can hear oh, myself, can hear through, myself you. through you. Okay. Yeah, they just saw the loop. I just muted mine, so we should be okay right now. This is what we get for having wine and Red Bull. We can't get yeah. the tech. Uh, Yes. It's not yes. technical difficulties, it's reseller difficulties. Yes, this was a very <laughs> impromptu video. video. It was. Luke, guys, listen. Luke literally just messaged me like 90 seconds ago. I can't even tell you. Yes. <laughs> I think Is there I still, feed, still feedback? I can, I can, yeah. Do you have headphones? Do you have headphones? Yeah, I do. Uh, give me just a second here. We'll fix it. Sorry, guys. I got him. I got him. Don't worry. <laughs> Incoming. <sighs> Okay, there we go. Right. Everybody, tell us. Uh, I think that's tell good. us if that's better. We are all set, I believe. Very good. Let's let's drop some people on the chat, Casey, before we get too far into this. Oh, absolutely, because I know a lot of you, and uh, I'm going to start it out. Betty, good. Betty A is here. Uh, awesome. She's in almost every chat. Betty, you're amazing. Uh, my favorite moderator, Terry, is here. She lives just down the road from me, over near Orlando. Um, let's see who else we got here. Jessica Jones. She's in a lot of chats. Good to see you, Jessica. Uh, Shanta Dillingham, amazing viewer. So lots of you people that uh, watch me have listened and came over to Luke's channel. So thank you guys for doing that. Much appreciated. Hi, Tony. Hi, Karen. Thanks for stopping in, guys. Hi, Betty. 
Hey, Patrick. Looks like we got a lot of people. We're up to uh, 67 people watching live, so it must be I bring Casey over and everyone wants to come watch. So <laughs> you guys stopping in. Yeah, I'm – yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna shoot it out on Instagram right now. But I'm gonna promise you guys, whenever Luke comes down and 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 take this to the bank, and you guys can pitchfork me if I don't do it. When he's here, if I have to do it on my phone, I'm gonna do a live show with him live in person in the same screen. So I promise you that will happen um, whenever he's here. Because Luke, for those of you that don't know, is getting married about 45 minutes down the road from me. So he will be here. Uh, if I got to film him while he's saying I do, I promise you I'll do it. I'll do it. Eight months and counting. It'll be on the beach. So you probably, could, you probably could creepily do that and no one would judge you. So it's fine. Yeah, I could, I, could, I could be the creeper on the beach filming Luke's wedding. So Yeah. <laughs> All right. So let's see what we got here. We've got 71 people watching, and I love to just jump into the topic. I don't want to mess do around. Let's, let's do it. So. The reason I prompted this video is one, I have watched several resellers that I respect a ton over the last week talk about their struggle with this. Looks like it's a widespread issue with clothing resellers. We are struggling with sales. I mean, it's just no doubt about it. The volume has decreased, but it also is a normal time of year for it to decrease from the trends I've looked at. And I have 1,700 active listings and I went 36 straight hours without a single sale. So. Whoa. You know, just to put that in perspective for you newer sellers out there, I know that a lot of people are struggling to get a lot of messages and, and I can appreciate it. I mean, it's tough. Mentally, it's tough, right? When you don't get those offers, you don't get sales. And I have 1,700 and I blinked for 36 hours. So I really, I think that the message here was be patient and try to shift your mindset to it being an opportunity. Um, you know, for me, I'm trying to mass inventory and I feel like sometimes we get so negative about the cash flow immediately that we don't see, I don't know what the phrase is, but you, we don't kind of see the tree in, for the forest. Is that the right the right analogy there? Yeah, um, it is. It is. And and I'll, I'll, I I have to say this. You are way more patient than me because 36 hours without a sale is bonkers. Yeah, I mean, let's say I was patient, but let's say I'm also drinking wine at 10 o'clock, an hour past my bedtime. So, I mean, yeah. patient or just trying to be an optimist. I'm not sure which it is. <laughs> um, and you know what? This is this is the point and, and I'm going to ask you this question because I don't know the answer to this. Was mm -hmm. there ever a point that you just were like, hey, I'm going to go to my oldest items or items I think maybe I'm a little high on and just start dropping prices? Like, Did that ever cross your mind? Uh, yeah, a ton of times and I had to quickly restrain myself from most of it <laughs> because I'm like, I, I kept talking actually. So Jason over on Prof Sales and Chris on 10 Can the Bay and we, we've been talking all week about it, right? And like, like from, I was good through Wednesday. My sales were cranking, and then like yep. Thursday, it was like they just just went off a cliff. Yeah, you know what? That's true. Wednesday we had a super good day, and Thursday we had a crappy day. So that's uh, that's true. Um, did Jason and Shannon talk you down off the ledge of like the mass yeah. reduction? And basically, it was like, look, it's a holiday weekend. It's Good Friday. You know, we got Holy was a Holy Saturday, and then Easter. So it's like you have a weekend that's focused around family and people getting together and whatever and like they're just not spending money. And historically this time of year, same thing. So to undercut it's, yourself on all your hard work of getting that inventory just is not a good long-term play. And no, you know, that, I think that was the other reason I really wanted to come on and talk. And I thought you could relate to it because you also have a huge inventory. You've been doing this for a lot longer than I have. Which is, and, and I got to say, my inventory doesn't seem so huge when I talk about you who's, would you say 1,700? Yes. And I'm at 2,300. So he's catching me, which is amazing. Remember, Luke's part-time. He has a job. So um, that's, that's pretty incredible. That's that's ridiculous. Pretty soon, I would say, what are we, in April, May, June, 90 days. Sometime in the middle of summer, he may catch our stuff. Hey, Kate's going to need to list a little faster. <laughs> I'm going to tell her. I'm, bring, I'm bringing her to... I'm bringing her to your wedding so that she can get some listing tips because good man. No, but Luke's right. You don't want to cut yourself short on money. Don't leave money on the table. Don't leave it hanging out just because sales are slow. Like you might be able to drop stuff to make five or 10 bucks here and there. But if you left stuff up over the course of a few days and ended up selling it, you'd end up 50, 100, $150 higher than if you had just blown it out. Nobody wants yeah. to just blow stuff out. Like, I mean, it just, it is, you know, we sold a, a, a uh, sweater yesterday for twenty dollars that I've had up for like three months. I was determined not to drop that sweater. I paid a buck for it. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't sell yeah. it for ten bucks or twelve bucks. I sold it for twenty. I'm like, yes. you know what? Somebody's gonna buy this. So, 
Uh, I, and I agree totally. And, and keeping the long-term mindset can be really tough sometimes. I mean, and actually, I'm going to shout Pam out real quick. Pam Martin, she's in the chat. Yesterday, she gave me a super tip to uh, go to a estate sale up the road from us in, in Uptown Charlotte and found a bunch of good stuff. Actually, should have paid about $30 for all of it. And for some reason, they charged me six. I don't know why she charged me. Whoa. She just was like, how many items do you have? And I'm like, I don't know. She's like, looks about six. Here's six bucks. Six bucks is good. I'm like, wow. Right, was, it, cool. was it the final day or was it? It was, yeah. So Saturday was like the half off. Yeah, they just wanted that stuff gone. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to follow up. Here. This is the trend for today. I can't believe you brought this up. But earlier today, I did a, uh, a group Skype call with a, a group of resellers in Oklahoma. I just did a private call with somebody in Oregon. And now here on your channel, people are talking about going to yard sales and estate sales on the last day and buying out what's left or buying a majority yeah. of it or leaving a card and having people call them. And yep. the item that's left is clothing. Yep. It's incredible. Like the amount of clothes you can go and buy. Somebody buying this kid, and God love him, he's like 15 years old. I can't even believe it. Taking his, his part-time after-school paycheck and buying 10 Nike polos from a yard sale that ended for a buck a piece. Wow. Yeah, at 15 years old. And I, I, I'm telling you, I'm going to get permission from him to post – he broke his arm yesterday playing basketball and was <laughs> on today messaging me how to list faster because his arm's broken. That kid's so, going to be a big stuff, I'm telling you right that now. Kid, that kid, kid needs to change stuff. his name to Gates immediately. Yeah. Like, yes. I yes, just got done. Incredible. So there's, yeah, like estate sales and yard sales on the last day. Luke just paid six bucks for stuff he's going to sell for like six million. I mean, come on. <laughs> So, no, it's it's super yeah, it's a super good no, being realistic. I mean, you can go and buy stuff for 10, 20, 30 bucks that might be worth 100. So Absolutely. The last days of those things are amazing and I've been having luck with it as well. And we get a lot of luck here because it rains and people get mad and they don't get the the the, the customers coming through. You can buy so much good stuff doing that. And don't sell yourself short when you get good deals like that. Absolutely. Well, and when you when you can get things for fifty cents or a dollar, I'm used to buying retail. Like it totally changes what you can buy and make a profit on too. Yeah. Nice. Was your girl? I see Pam was in there. Was she at that estate sale before? She you? was. She was literally at the estate sale. She messaged me on Facebook and was like, "Luke, like, there's tons of blazer suits. There's tons of clothing you need to get here." And so I'm super appreciative. Of her. I mean, huge shout out yeah. to her for even. That's me awesome. Yeah. That's something our community helps. As much as you guys say we help you, you guys help us too. Because I have Absolutely. gotten those messages as well. Like, hey, I got a message on Tuesday or Wednesday about Plato's Closet having a 90% off sale in my area. And, and that's so invaluable because when you go and can tap into that, and who knows how much inventory you got of it, but you had no idea. I mean, it's. it's, it's I, I had real. zero. And 90% and off is incredible at Plato's Closet. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I, you this person is it. yeah. This person person is ultra private, but thank you so much. You know who you are. I just put it on Instagram, so I'm sure they're coming to look. But uh, thank you. If you watch this later, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> That's good to hear. <laughs> yeah, well, we have to help each other. Yep, Pam's absolutely right. Yep, absolutely. So I and I so I've got to drill this home. So I was thinking about this, Casey, and I was like, okay, like this sucks, but. My goal for this year. Oh wait, who, special guest here. Hold on, time out. I'm a big dog person. I've got Thor the Gold <laughs> Retriever. Let's let's get the introduction for the few who don't know who this is. Uh, yeah. So this is our second dog. This is Chewbacca, aka Chewy. Um, <laughs> we have. I'll show you guys this guy. We have a three and a half year old Yorkie who is like the terror of the house. But um, about a year and a half ago, Florida had some devastating storms. Um, everything flooded cars were floating down the highways. And I mean, when I say cars, I mean, think about a gridlocked highway. All the cars in that gridlock were floating down the roads. It was devastating. And um, one day outside of the old office that I had, this little guy was just skin and bones, drenched, standing outside of the office. We couldn't let him go. It took us the better part of an hour to coax him inside. And uh, finally got him in, took him to the vet, checked him out, the whole thing. Nobody claimed him not microchipped, couldn't find his owner. Of course, I have a huge social media following. No one locally knew who he was, nothing about him. And somehow he ended up staying. So because you guys can probably tell, he's got a little bit of the chewy Chewbacca look going on yeah. with the fur. He's really he's fur. Awesome. Right now. He's, he, yeah, he ended up staying at the house. And uh, he's lived with us ever since. And uh, he terrorizes the Yorkie. But, um, you know, 
we couldn't let him go back out on the street. So that's awesome. Looking forward to meeting them. When we get down there. <laughs> I'm a huge dog person. So is Shannon. So I, I, I yeah, love. He's a dogs. he's a mon he's a monster. He he should be an eight foot tall Chewbacca with the kind of attitude <laughs> that he has. But he's cool. He's a good dog. He's super well behaved. But he just has this this little like ar like he just runs around and he terrorizes the Yorkie because you know Yorkies are all fragile. They're oh, yeah. they're terrorizing each other right now. <laughs> like they just have stare downs. Yeah, it's it's funny. But yeah, we, we're huge dog people too. The first day we had him, Kate had a brand new SUV and he was scared to death when we finally coaxed him in. You know what he did in the back of the SUV all the way to the vet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it wasn't good. But uh, yeah, we're huge dog people. So that's my guest. Very cool. My guest. Well, welcome. <laughs> <laughs> but, so I, I just want to drive forward. And pivoting from dogs, because I could talk about dogs all the time. Yeah, so could I. I dogs. But so pivoting back to like the topic of the chat, and the thing I was thinking about today was when you look at 2017 as a full year, so when I look at it from a goal perspective, I just talked about in one of my other videos, I actually slowed down my sale. So I went from 20% to 15 because I was trying to slow my, my sell through down because I couldn't keep up with it. And more of just like on the shipping, answering questions, all the back end work. And you know when this happens, it sucks not have the cash flow, but you also could flip that coin and look at it as like a huge opportunity, right? Now I can take all that downtime where I had to ship items, answer questions, do all these things. I could source and list 10 times more. I can fluff up my inventory to a point that when I get to peak selling season, I have more things to cash in on and for a higher dollar, right? If I focus on increasing my sales right now, I am not gonna get what I could get for them three months from now. Right, so, exactly. And and that's you no you're super there's so many people that that focus the opposite side and it may work today but when you go back i promise you 90 days from now six months from now when you look back at what you actually ended up selling those items for because some people are like oh 20 percent sale i'm gonna go up to 30 or 40 percent and i'm like don't stop like, right. just re re stop back up slow down Think long term. A lot of people think about today and, and short term rather than long term, um, yeah. because a hundred thousand dollar year or fifty thousand dollar year or whatever your goal is for this year, it is a year goal. It is not a seven day goal. It is not a fourteen day goal. So, um, you know, just because that coat didn't sell for fifty dollars today doesn't mean it's not going to sell for fifty dollars in June or July or August or whatever it is. Um, and that's, you know, right now we're selling a lot of swimsuits because it's almost summer, right. but come June, July, August, I'm going to be stocking up on costumes for Halloween. I always do it. Right. I go look for, and it's, it's just look short, you know, short term and, and having the glasses, the goggles, I call them the goggles on is not, you know, think about the entire year. What can I buy right now and list for 30 or $40 that maybe in a month or two, somebody will buy or three months. Don't just dropping the value of your inventory. It's not smart. It's, it's super not. And, and I would say the discouragement of no sales forces a lot of people to do that. Um, oh, I, I totally agree. I mean, we're, we're very, yeah. we're very instant gratification driven. I am myself. Yeah. Included. This is not a knock on anyone. This is like, I'm the it's, same way. It's, oh, I, am I want too. the teaching. I want the offer. I want things moving. I want my hard work paid off. But the reality is, is when you fire sale something because you're ticked, you're not getting sales, you are devaluing your time. Every single time you do that, you're saying your time is not worth enough, right? So when it was $20 an hour, you're now making it $15 an hour. Yep. And I, I told somebody the other day a way to think of it is every time you drop a price on something just to blow it out, you cost yourself the profit on another item, which means every time you sell 10 of those blown out items, you might as well take 10 pieces of inventory out of your closet and throw it in the trash. Yes. Because that's what you did. You cost yourself a $10 profit on those items. Yep. If you think about it that way, I so many people were like, uh-oh. <laughs> like they immediately stopped and they were like, Oh, that's not good. I'm like, it's just what I'm saying. You got it. You know, this, you didn't start this business to do it for six months or 12 months. You started this business to do it in the long term. Right. Everything is worth what it's worth. And you know, if you yeah. bought it, that's the other thing. It starts creeping into people's mind. They start doubting their buying ability. Like, did I buy this and, and bought it wrong? No, you just didn't give it enough chance. You didn't, you didn't yes. give yourself enough opportunity to sell it. eBay clothing is not selling iPhones. You sell an iPhone on eBay, everybody's going to jump on it. You're selling used clothing. And let's be honest, it's not the highest on the I got to have this today you know, oh, yeah. list. That's the reason we're able to get the margins that we get. That's why you can buy an item for a dollar and sell it for 30. 
because the margin is super good because it, it may take a little time to move. It, you have to come into this business expecting that because again, you know, clothes are not, I don't have to have that Tommy Hilfiger polo. We have to have clothes, but I don't have to go on eBay and buy that polo. Like right. it, it's, it's most people buying stuff are spur of the moment purchases, kind of splurgy things, but that allows us to make, what, what are we making? 3000% margins on some of this stuff. So yeah, absurd. yeah. so just be prepared for that. Well, and the perfect example, and after I, we'll jump into the chat here and answer some questions, guys. So definitely uh, put question in front and then your question after, and we'll hit the chat. We'll start answering them. But just to kind of piggyback, I think you just phrased that perfectly, right? It's like, I sold a blazer that I've had for almost 14 months. I sold it for $50. It was a Hickey Freeman blazer, right? So I paid $1.40 to have it up for 14 months, and I paid $5 up front. I'm six forty yep. in, and it shipped flat rate, and I'm still netting over $30, right? On an item you paid, five, you paid five bucks for? Right. And had I had fire so sale, six hundred percent. Right. Had I had fire sale because I'm impatient, I'm cutting into my hourly every single time. And you guys mm -hmm. have to have faith that, yeah, today I had zero sales in 36 hours. I'm also going to have $700 in sales in 36 hours span some point in the future. It's going to offset. It's right. going to average out. Don't forget about the future sales, right? Don't forget about those big upticks that you're going to enjoy. All right. So I'm going to go on Luke's channel and find something I like. I'm going to buy it. <laughs> I can't let him go. I can't let him Wait, go. No, 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 no. Wait, hold on. Hold on. I did sell three things since the 36 hours expired. So you don't have to have too much. Oh, All right. Well, okay. So I can buy something cheap. Something cheap. Yeah. You could you buy got, the you $10. You got, a tie, you got a tie for sale? <laughs> yeah. Let's trade ties. That's fine. Yeah. Let's do it. <laughs> your thousand ties for my hundred ties, right? <laughs> yeah. Hey, listen, if you want one, just pay the shipping. You can have as you many have as you want. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Let's jump. Wow, we have 120 people almost yeah. watching. So let this me is awesome. let me jump into the chat with Luke. Luke, you pull pull them out and I will uh I will yeah. there we go. 120 people. By the way, there's 120 of you and there's only 34 big blue thumbs up. So please um I know you guys always ask what's the big deal with the thumbs up? Um, the more thumbs up and likes that somebody can get on a video, it lets them know that you guys enjoy this and that you're learning from the videos. So if you guys can press that, it's just down below the chat. Just press that for Luke. Um, and when he goes back through his videos and sees the likes that are on videos, he can know which ones were most helpful to you guys and be able to make more of that type of uh, content. So that's super important. Appreciate that. Absolutely. <clears throat> Uh, so I'm going to go with two questions in a row here. So the first is I've seen a theme, and people are talking about a recession. They're talking about the economy, and I'm not going to get all philosophical on people, but I'm just going to I'm going to answer this, Casey, and I'll let you piggyback on it. I'm just going to straight up say that if there is a recession, it's only going to increase our business. All right. So we're resellers. We're selling at a discount, and we're helping people save money. So don't be afraid of a recession hurting a reselling business. That's my take on it. What do you think, Casey? I'll, I'll let you right. Uh, so we are selling discounted goods. Um, no matter how you want to call it, pre-owned, used, thrifted, whatever you want to say, it is discounted. Uh, there are more people in this country that want to buy discounted thrift at a deal, at a discount, however you want to phrase it, rather mm -hmm. than retail. The words retail does not parlay into the majority of your co potential customer base. And I can prove that to you by letting you know that Circuit City, Radio Shack, Macy's, HH Greg, Shall I Go On, retail are all going out of business. So people want a deal. And that's what we offer on eBay is a deal on merchandise. So the recession only helps us. It is mm -hmm. not a downside. Um, you will never see a decline in sales because a decline in the economy has happened. Um, and, and I have never seen somebody go on eBay and say, I had no merchandise to get. I had no way to sell merchandise. It, it just doesn't yeah. happen, guys. It doesn't happen. Glad we're on the um, same page with that. Uh, yeah, I, absolutely. I, I, I see a lot of people in the chat are on the same page with that. So hopefully we clarified that and, and give you some confidence. If you're starting a new eBay business, whatever, like the, if you think there's a recession, then you should jump in even harder, in my opinion, right? Like if you think that's yeah. coming, you should be stocking up on as much inventory as you can right now because yeah and and there's a lot of opportunity to get that merchandise because not only are those stores closing a lot of stores are closing but when those stores close a lot more merchandise ends up at the second hand retailers that sell at a discount your marshalls your home goods um, you know plato's closet that discounts at 90% 
thank you again. I can't tell you how much money I made. Um, yes, I bet. <laughs> 90% discount at any store. I, 90% at the Louis Vuitton store is a deal, okay? Yeah, you, just, you just win, yeah. <laughs> my, my pocketbook hurts, but that's okay. <laughs> yeah, you spend a lot, but you're going to win. Well, yeah, so, and we'll, and we'll have an, I'll have a discussion with you, Casey, and a little preview to the audience. I have pulled the trigger, and I'm actually paying for the invoices after this video on my first bulk buy. So there will be a lot of future Ooh. content on that. I'm not gonna dive in tonight because it's not the topic. Okay, so we're not gonna dive into it, but I do need one answer. How many yes. pieces? 3,000. Woo! Shannon might kill me because I still, and I know it fits in my garage, but I don't know how well it fits in my garage. Whoa! So, Sir, I'm gonna need you to make it through Florida at least, please. <laughs> yes, yeah, she might kill me, but there'll be a lot of future videos on that, but I don't wanna derail. But it's very true. Take advantage of the opportunities right now because they if are. If it comes there. across, yeah. Yes, they are out there. I'm going to answer Tony's question right now. Tony is, he views a lot of our videos. He's a great subscriber, has awesome questions in his building's business. He just asked, and it's about counter offering. So he, he has a shoe for $4. Um, he turned down an offer of $39.99 plus shipping. Uh, and he had a $49.99 best offer, I'm guessing, is what he's saying. He counter 45 is where he made a mistake. And I'm not going to answer this specific like to that detail, but I'm going to say Tony is have faith in what you price your items at if you did your research correctly. Even if they don't pull the trigger on it, you counter, it's a blank, you don't ever hear from them. You didn't mess up, then they just weren't the right buyer for you. The right buyer will come along looking for that size, that style, that material, that color, and they're going to pull the trigger for the comparable price as long as it's not super inflated. So like that's how I'd answer that. How about you, Casey? I mean, right? Yeah, I I second guess myself a lot on those best offers, and we had one. Um, here's a perfect example. I found um, two Grand Theft Auto four or Grand Theft Auto fives for PlayStation four at a pawn shop. I paid like six fifty or seven. I think I gave them fourteen or fifteen for both of them, and uh, I listed them for thirty bucks, and I had offers at twenty all day long, and I was like, I'm countering these at like twenty five, twenty six dollars. All of a sudden, one sold at twenty nine ninety nine, and I was like, you know what? Decline, decline, decline. Second one sold for twenty nine ninety nine uh, this morning, and I was like, it's just. I looked at the comps; they were twenty eight, thirty two, thirty one, twenty nine. If the comps, you know, make it reasonable, and you're not at eighty bucks on a thirty dollar item, hold out. It means somebody will buy it. It may not be today. It may not be tomorrow, but hold out. If the comps you know, make it reasonable, then there's no other, there's nothing else you have to go off of. Like, com com completely agree. So hopefully Tony, that answers your question. That was, that was an awesome example. Yeah, for sure. We've got 133 people watching live. That's nothing for Casey, but for me, that's the most I've ever had watching live. So thank is you, Is that Casey. the most you've ever had? Yes, I appreciate everyone awesome. stopping in. This is, this is an awesome way to bring up my slow sales, so I appreciate it, guys. <laughs> Subtle boost to my ego that is very fragile. <laughs> thank you, and thank you to everybody who jumped in here. Uh, appreciate it. Luke's got great content. And if you are a new viewer, make sure you hit over to the left, subscribe button, and there's a little bell next to Luke's name that you can press. Um, that will give you his notifications when he goes live because he's been doing a lot of live shows and uh, will also tell you when a new recorded video is posted um, so you don't miss any of that. Um, his content is on point, great, great items, and he specializes in a lot of items at a lot of high dollar prices. So if you want to push your average sale price up, trust me, watch it. I appreciate that. And likewise to uh, Rockstar Flipper here. I know that all of you probably are subscribed to him, but <laughs> for the two who are not, definitely check out his channel, please. <laughs> I will link it up after this video without a doubt. Uh, <clears throat> so let's keep going through questions here. So Rory yeah, just said, I found a deerskin trading post leather blazer. Do leather blazers sell well? Uh, I'm going to let you answer this first, and then I'll jump in. I want to see what, what knowledge you have of leather blazers, Casey. Put you on the spot. Oh, he's put me on the spot. Hold on. Who's, whose question are we at? I was so just reading. Rory and Joy says, question, I found a deerskin trading post leather blazer. Do leather blazers sell well? Do leather, yeah, okay. So leather is obviously, uh, Roy and Joy, thank you for the question. Uh, leather is a very good um, uh, quality you know, material. People search by just the keyword leather. And I'm not a huge blazer. I don't do a lot of blazers and suits. However, I have done a lot of searches for comparable of those type of leather blazers. I have seen them out in person. And I can tell you right now, one of the hottest categories in um, merchandise, clothing, period, whether it's women's, men's, whatever, is country, western, leather, period. 
They are selling like crazy. I have sold leather. This is going to be hard to believe. I have sold leather Western shirts that have yep. leather thing too. Le yeah, leather blazers right now. I imagine if you can get them at a even a little more than what you're used to paying, and Luke yeah. probably has sold some. They are probably selling well, and I have seen a few out in town um, that I probably should have picked up. And I picked up the leather shirts, and I'm going to keep looking for the blazers. Uh, country. The the keywords country western. Um, the horse type things. I sold some horse shirts and a horse mm -hmm. leather on them. Super hot right now. So look for those. Absolutely. Yep. I, I totally agree. And actually, just a, a specific example. I sold a Tommy Bahama long sleeve leather shirt for sixty five ninety nine. It's about four or five months ago, but I remember it very vividly because I've only found one. I've never found one since. But leather just sells. So great buy if you picked it up. I hope you did. If not, go back and pick it up. I live in I live in Tommy Bahama USA country like yeah. the people here in Florida the old guys that's, that's all Hollywood. they wear if it's not Salt Life it's Tommy Bahama you can go to our thrift stores and find a dozen Tommy Bahama shirts in every store I have yet to find a leather one that is oh, crazy wow. yeah I I never seen it I picked it up I was like oh is this that cheap polyester crap that was what I thought oh. first and I looked and I was like. That's leather. Holy it's shit. legit. Yeah. Leather. Holy shit. So, no, so like, those Tommy Bahama. Yeah, those shirts are like 150 bucks retail. Yeah. Legit. It, and it sold in like a week. It was up. I took a best offer. I was like, oh yeah, sure. 65.99. Perfect. Oh yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So yeah, the, the question, the answer to that question is absolutely. Absolutely. Terry's got an awesome question actually. She said, when you bring in new items before you take photos and lists, do you sort them by style? What do you put them in when sorting? I'm gonna let you answer that because you do a lot more inventory than me, and then I'll I'll piggyback. Yeah. So Kate does most of the listings, and she sorts um, by how she lists. So we have the female and the male mannequin. So she'll sort the male and female clothing because she doesn't want to have to keep moving the mannequins and switching out mannequins. Um, and then all of the items that don't fit on the mannequins, like if we buy a purse or a little kid's outfit, they don't go on the mannequins. The flat lays, they'll go into a different pile. Um, so our strategy is to sort by how we're going to list it to streamline the listing process. That's how we do it. That, that's pretty much exactly what I do. I mean, I use sell similar so much that it benefits me to sort into like categories, just like you're talking about. So jeans go with jeans, dress pants with dress pants, dress shirts with dress shirts, sweaters with sweaters. It just makes sense to photo them. And I do batches, so I photo in batches, I measure in batches, mm -hmm. and then I list in batches. How many, this is my question for Luke, because I don't know this. How many do you do in a batch, like so on a given time? It's really funny you talked about that, and we will have a live show with a little more detail on this on Monday. However, I will give a little sneak peek. So I've actually been, I usually work in, in increments of an hour. That's just kind of how my brain works. And then I get like mentally drained, so like an hour is about what I can do. <laughs> yeah. But I, I've been timing myself this week. So I've been doing about anywhere from 35 to 45 items in an hour of photographing, depending on the item type. And you know, that's an, it's about six and a half photos per listing is what the mm -hmm. average is. And, and I don't want to give too much away because Prof Sales and, and 10K in the Bay and, and uh, Casey, I believe, will hopefully be guest appearing. I will be there, yes. Unless he changes his mind and put him nope. on the spot again. But, I will uh, be there Monday, yeah. So we will be talking more about measuring metrics. And so that's one of the things we've been talking about. It's a great question. But I do batch in hour increments. I feel like after an hour, my productivity like kind of decreases a little bit because I just get drained. So like I'll go from photos to measurements after that hour and then to right. listings and then back. Like I feel like anything over an hour, you just kind of start to break down a little bit as far as being super. Right. How about you guys? Yeah, that yeah, that's monotonous and and people that's like a proven stat. You can almost Google that. Um, every 60 to 90 minutes, somebody has to change tasks mm -hmm. or they will go downhill. Like that's, that's a proven thing. So yeah, you have to change it. And, and it depends. A lot of people ask me how many an hour. It just, it depends on the type of item, but eight to 10 is probably fair. Um, you should be targeting eight items an hour. And I mean, you should be able to photograph eight items, six to eight pictures each, you know, 48, 64, whatever amount of pictures you're taking, photograph them, sit down and do the drafts in about an hour. So. Um, you know, every six to eight minutes should be an item. I, I totally agree. Absolutely agree. Uh, the brain no, team. No, oh, go ahead. What did you say? Oh, Terry said it's going to be the brain team on Monday. <laughs> yeah, it's it's going to be it's going to be interesting. I'm excited. It should be a lot of fun. I know. I, it's going to be crazy. Yeah. I think I'm going to learn a lot, which is why I'm excited, honestly. But 
I just need to sit down with Jason and I learn everything. That guy. I totally agree. Can't completely agree. <laughs> he would be so embarrassed if he heard that. <laughs> hey, I pride myself with being the dumbest person in the room with the people I associate with. So it's cool. You guys all bring me up pretty high. I appreciate it. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Listen, a lot of people talk about being the smartest person in the room. I try to be the dumbest person in the room because the only thing I can leave is smarter than when I walked in. <laughs> that cheers. It's a good Saturday Night Live. I like that. I appreciate it. Yep. Top broker, Luke, what accounting are you using? I use QuickBooks. What do you use? Uh, that's a great question. Uh, so actually, first, I'm going to plug my own video. Watch my quarter one reflection video I just did a couple days ago. I actually go through in detail the Excel document I use to do, actually, I do my P&L on it has my tracking, pretty much everything I roll up for my accountant. Um, but to answer you in more detail, I do average costing. So I track the amount of items I buy, uh, the amount they cost in total, and then I get an average cost, and I plug that for my cost of goods sold at the end of the year, month, day, whatever, whenever you're rolling up your sales. Hopefully that helps you. I don't want to dive too much into that because I feel like that's a whole separate video. Yeah, that so, is. I mean, Casey has a lot of great content on that. If you just look on his channel for tax-related videos, he has a ton of really detailed good stuff. And then I just did my quarter one reflection video. Either of those should answer your question, I believe. Yeah, and Luke, Luke's process is similar to mine. When we, if you go to the bins and you buy 100 items, you spend 100 bucks, it's just a cost average. You spent a dollar an item. Just assign everything that average cost. If you go into a thrift store and you buy three items and you spent five bucks a piece, you're welcome to individualize. You bought, you know, Tommy Bahama, Nike, Adidas, five by five. But if you're buying in bulk, just cost average it. So much yeah. easier. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, if if you're putting up over 100 listings a month, I just I would recommend average costing. It's just yeah, absolutely. Uh, simple to phase seven. What time is your Monday live? Uh, we are going to go live at 8:30 p.m. and I'm 99% sure on that. Yeah. I'm not the I'm not the official organizer, but that was I believe what we last aligned on. Am I correct with that, Casey? Yeah. So Jason messaged me just a little while ago, confirming. Give me just a second okay. on his. I believe it was 8:30, and that's Eastern time. We're all on the East Coast. No, Jason actually sent me um, 8 p.m. Eastern on that. Eight. Ooh, that's right. But I see it. Yes. 8 p.m. Eastern. Yeah. Okay. So, so okay. But I yeah, believe we're going live at 8:30. So just so everyone knows. Oh, this what, for the for so the this is what's going on, and I, some people have watched. So, uh, Chris from 10K on the Bay, myself, and Jason from Prop Sales, we have a mastermind call every Monday every Monday night. And what that means is we basically share what's gone good, what's gone bad, what we're working on. We just kind of problem solve for each other because when you're kind of in your own zone, you kind of get in your own way when you're solving problems. And so we kind of use each other as resources to pivot away from that and keep growing. We've invited Casey because we know that Casey is farther along than we are and where we're trying to get to. And so Casey, sorry, but this is true. And so we've invited Casey to join us and help share his knowledge for a week. Um, we also respect him tremendously and know that he has a ton to offer. I mean, that's just the reality of it. I am blushing and it's not from the alcohol thing. It is from the vodka. Don't let him do it. He's being very humble. It's fine. No, <laughs> but, it is. <laughs> but in summary though, that's, that's what we do. And so I believe at 8.30 we'll be going live. We're gonna talk with Casey for a half hour. We're actually gonna, we have a couple problems we're trying to brainstorm with him anyways. So um, we're gonna hit him and grill him a little bit for some help. And then at 8.30 we'll be going live and talking about kind of some of the metrics we've been measuring and how you really can hone in on improving your business on an individual basis. I think that's really the goal of what we're trying to get to is yeah. what are the specific drivers of your business? And, and I don't wanna go any further right now, guys, cause I don't wanna spoil the content because I, there's two other people who aren't even here that can add tremendous value. So. Absolutely. So that means you got to come back Monday. You got to yes. check it out Monday. Is, is that we'll going to be on Jason's channel? It will be on Jason's channel, Prof Sales. Please go subscribe if you haven't. I'm hoping everyone here is subscribed, but if you're not, go check out him and 10K on the page. And Luke, Luke, if you could, before you or after this uh, live mm -hmm. video process is linked, Prof Sales, I'm going to push Prof Sales. If you guys follow on social media, you forget, whatever. I'm going to uh, advertise Prof Sales channel uh, all weekend yep. to get Monday's um, viewers up. We'd love to get like 500 viewers for those guys on yep. Monday. So um, It's going to be very unique. That's what I can promise. It'll be very yep. unique compared to what is out there right now. So, and yeah, so some, perspective. yeah, so subscribe and turn the notification on for Luke and, and, and especially Jason's channel for Monday and come back. Um, they're going to – I'm excited for it for Monday and uh, – Jason asked me, Jason didn't have, you know, he didn't have to ask very quick or, or very long. He just like, hey, do you want to be, yep, I'm interested, yep, I'm there, I'm count there. me in, <laughs> count me in. And uh, so I, I'm excited for it. You guys don't understand this, but 
and, and a lot of people ask me this all the time, like, who do you watch on YouTube? Who do you learn from? We learn from each other. Like, there's a yes. lot of things. Jason knows so much that neither of us know. And Luke specializes in things that I have no freaking clue about. And 10K on the Bay, he's all the way out in San Francisco. So he's got a whole other side of the market that he knows. Just a lot of things that we can learn from each other. So that's, it's super important. Yeah, I completely agree. I echo everything he just said. I mean, it's, we all have a lot to share and we all have a lot of different expertise and I learn from all of them on a daily basis. So I, uh, I appreciate that. But let's, let, who is, I, I'm who feeling is, ambitious, is, Casey. It's, it's, we have 16 minutes to 11 o'clock. Do you want to go full power Q and A through the hour here? Are you, are you feeling let's ambitious? Let's do it. I, I'm going to follow your lead. Let's do it. Okay. Let's, let's just, let's just power through. All right, you pick them, I'll pick them, whatever. Well, I'm scrolling through right now. Who is Jason? Um, Jason is Jason from Prof Sales. If you don't follow his YouTube channel, just type in Prof Sales into your YouTube search window. You'll find him. Yes. Um, subscribe and notify, turn on notifications. You'll uh, be live with him Monday. That's where the, uh, the chat will be Monday. I'm seeing a ton of questions, and I've seen this lately. I believe. Do you wash clothing before you sell it? I'm going to answer first because I have a very quick answer. I think you do a little more of a deep dive on this. No, I do not wash anything, and if I feel like I have to wash it, I don't buy it. And that's simply <laughs> because it's not worth my time because I have an abundance of amazing inventory to buy here in Charlotte, so I don't. I'm going to go by default to you. And that is the most honest answer I have ever heard from anybody. It's used. Used is used. <laughs> that's it doesn't smell. Um, it's not stinky, and if it is, I don't buy it. True. So, go ahead. so I agree with that. Um, we have bought items, and we just had one come through. And ask Kate what I did with it. I threw it in the trash. It smelled awful. Bloop, in the trash. Yep. My mistake. Um, if I buy it and it needs like crazy laundering, whatever, like it's probably not worth it. You're probably opening yourself up to a return. We do wash some stuff if it's basic, but you're talking about like a suit jacket or a silk, you know, three hundred dollar retail shirt. You're not throwing that in your washer and dryer. You can't. Yeah. You just you can't. So. Yeah. Um, the other question I get a lot is about potential bed bugs and things of that nature. Um, if you buy it from a retail store where it's hanging on a rack, that's non-existent. Like it doesn't happen. The only time I would ever consider that an impossible issue is in the bins. It's piled in, in, in you know, Gaylords or bins or whatever. In Florida, I have never experienced it. It might be because bed bugs die at 113 degrees. It's always like 120 here, so everything dies before we buy it anyways. Right. Um, and if we stick it in our trunks and drive it home, you can bet it's dead before we get home. Um, but the best way to handle that is just throw everything in the dryer. Your dryer operates at 130 degrees typically. Um, so those will die anyways. I have never, in all the years I have bought, I have never experienced it. I would put that way down on the list of I'm worried about it things. So I'm, I'm knocking on wood for you right now, Casey. I know, no kidding. And and we don't just take stuff right from here into a bedroom or whatever. We bring it in and we check. The first thing we do is we go through and look at everything. Like we check it all. So if something was going to happen, we, we're going to notice it. And we obviously find stains. I don't have photographer lighting when I'm at the beds. I'm looking at stuff, but I miss stuff. We, we search it for stains and we'll wash it. So a lot of stuff ends up getting washed anyway. So just do it on a case-by-case -case basis. Don't spend all day trying to wash clothes. But if it needs it, great. If it doesn't, just list it, sell it, and move on. I have not had any returns ever because somebody messaged me and said, hey, did you buy this from a thrift store and it has a weird smell? That has never happened to me, ever. Agreed. Never has happened. I think, yeah. we, I think we covered that pretty – that was a perfect answer, Casey. <laughs> that was perfect. Uh, Top Broker said you – know, oh, you know, I'm way behind the chat right now. Sorry, guys. Have I ever had thrift store people ask you if you're reselling, Luke? Oh, that's a good question. This oh, so this is very interesting. I've had I've never had it directly asked, but what I've had a ton is them be like, you know, these are women's, right? So I get that a ton. <laughs> I get the one time I got, did your wife throw out your wardrobe? I got that one time, and I this was like, I'm like I don't even have a ring on, so I'm like what? And uh, and so I was like no, and then the other time was like. Are you sure these are your size? That's the third like kind of thing I've gotten. <laughs> but this last week, which I asked this, someone asked me a similar question. You know, these are women's whatever. I said, oh, I just look for brands I resell on eBay. She stopped talking to me for the entire checkout, 
And I've never Are had serious? that happen. Normally, like, they're super friendly. Like, especially here in Charlotte, we don't have any issues. And I was like, it was just, like, cold. And, I, and I've never – and I don't know if anyone in the chat can, you know, have had something similar happen. I had never, ever – I mean, in years, had never had that. So well, how about you? I mean, have you had, had that? Yeah, I've had people ask me about reselling. That's pretty – somewhat common it happens not at the bins because everybody's a reseller but in like salvation army um i've had the employees ask no one's ever treated me differently they still ring it up it's prices it is i've had one lady who asked if i was a reseller because i was in the women's section and she asked if i was a reseller and i said yeah you know we buy stuff i've learned the women's brand a lot and she goes wow i wish i had a man to teach me that and that was pretty funny um that's cool yeah, so I was like, well, you know, you got to get yourself a good guy that knows women's fashion. Um, <laughs> I had a cashier one time. This was the day I bought the bras and the lingerie. When I was checking out, it was like they were on top, and she was checking them out. And she goes, these sell well, huh? <laughs> and I was like, well, you know. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so not gotta, for me. But, yeah, nobody's ever been like, you know, mean or disrespectful. Yeah. People give me looks or different things. And, and I get stopped in all the stores by you guys. Awesome. Mm -hmm. And, and some of you give me a hard time just joking with me like, Oh, hanging out in the women's section, huh? And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, cause you women spend a lot of money on stuff. <laughs> so, yeah. It's, it's fun. I, I never have a big problem with that though. That's I, I've heard some people have an issue, but not me, not too bad. Yeah, that that was the first time. Like I've never had it, and it wasn't even an issue. It was just like obvious, though. It was like okay, conversation yeah. over. I'm like, oh. <laughs> that's funny. Like I can't believe somebody did that. That's funny. yeah. It, it was it was odd. <laughs> uh, Olivia just asked this is an interesting question. She said, "Do you ever get guilty buying stuff so cheap when you know you'll make as much money? I feel bad. Like you're stealing from them. Maybe I'm gonna I'm gonna let you answer first, and I'll answer second. I'm curious. First, I get to answer this one first. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yes, I pass that to you. The, the honest answer from my business mind is no, absolutely not. Um, if somebody donated this and chose not to do the work to sell it themselves or get the value for what they paid for it or whatever the case is, then no, I don't feel bad for it. Because um, it doesn't matter if it came from a thrift store or a yard sale or Craigslist. If they chose not to do the extra labor to maximize the money on it, then it's not my problem. That's capitalism. That's Walmart every day of the week. That's wherever you shop. Um, do I feel bad that some of these people probably could have benefited from maximizing the money? Yeah, I see it where some people probably could have used the money, but again, uh, the world works in a way, if you're willing to put the, the labor and the work out, the sweat equity, you deserve to maximize the money in your pocket and not someone else's. So um, that's why we get paid what we get paid and that's why we get to make the margins we make. We're willing to do what others are not willing to do. So that's my answer to that. That was that was actually a pretty perfect answer, and I think the only thing I'll piggyback on that is, I uh, don't forget the good that it's doing when you purchase it. So, um, and I think about this with every area of commerce. I mean, even capital, whatever. Like, I don't like getting political at all because that's just not what I talk about. But just in general, from an economy standpoint, when we purchase those items, we're doing good for the people who work there. We're doing good for the business. We're doing good all the way around. If someone else came in and purchased that who wasn't going to resell, they're still paying four dollars. It didn't change the outcome of the business by me purchasing that versus them. And actually, in reality, in Casey's case, right, he's employing someone else. He's actually furthering the economy because he's purchasing it for the same price further in their business, and then he's paying someone else in the process to prep it and sell it. So he's actually furthering even you know a step past that. So that's right. how I look at it. I mean, right. Those st those stores use the money. Whatever you pay for the item to employ a ton of people. They're employing disabled people, mm -hmm. uh, Goodwill employs ex-convicts who are trying to do better with their lives. Mm -hmm. They're employing people that couldn't get jobs. So that money is helping. And I know that the talk of the CEO making $18 million, yeah. that, that is what it is. We but can't at control the end, that. We, we, can't control we can't stop that. But all of the rest of the money is employing mm -hmm. hundreds and thousands of people. So your money is helping in one way or the other. And the fact that you're able to take it and make more money is helping you and potentially employees at some point in time. So, um, you know, and it's also, don't forget when you sell an item, you're helping somebody else save money on buying an item they didn't have to pay retail for. So you're helping even more yeah. by saving that person money. So Yeah, and that, I think we just answered that pretty pretty honestly and effectively. I, I, 
I and and yeah, and and I got I got it in the end. I got I got to put the end to it because it was awesome. Mommy reporter said at the end of the day, cha ching. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good summary. I like that. <laughs> uh, let's see. If you see one, feel free to grab it, Casey. I'm just trying to scroll through here and catch up. No bins in Georgia. Yeah, you guys are out of luck in Georgia. I apologize for that. <laughs> And it's funny because I'm a rarity. I don't enjoy the bin experience. So I've tried a couple mean. times. It's be, I'm spoiled. So I have to be honest with all viewers here. And I'm sorry because it's like I feel like I'm rubbing it every time. I am super spoiled at retail stores here in Charlotte. We have flat prices. I have 17 stores in a 30 mile, you know, 30 minute drive. I don't hurt for re for sourcing. If I did, I would probably do this the bins. I just People, I don't like people touching me. Like, like I don't like the, <laughs> I don't like the, like, I feel like I'm in everyone's way. I'm like too polite about it. Not like a claustrophobia thing, but just like, I feel like, oh, I'm so sorry. Like I bumped into you. Oh, I'm so sorry. And so I okay. end up with nothing. My bin's just empty because everyone's just. <laughs> oh, that's the best thing I've heard all week. I got to tell Kate, Luke just said he doesn't like the bins because he doesn't want people touching I just I feel bad. Like, I feel like I'm just like pushing someone it's, around or it like, is, being it rude is. or. It's terrible. I guess I'm too polite for the bins, I think. And Chris, Chris has talked about this before on Tech in the Bay, and I agree with him. Like, I'm not going to push a woman out of the way who's getting something. Like, I just, I'm not going to do that. So, I went no, with Jenny's friend once, and, and I got some good stuff, but I was, like, solo in the corner by myself after it was done. <laughs> Man, we, we are, like, I used to feel, but I, I'll be honest, I felt the same way as Luke. I'm like, excuse me, excuse me, like walking through the bench, trying to squeeze through. And at some point after about a dozen elbows, I realized, you know what? <laughs> Get out of the way. I turned into the ultimate warrior. I was like, this is it. We're done. Um, but he is, I, I much prefer shopping at retail stores where I don't have to fight. The prices don't compare, but the bins are a fight, man. They are. There's no, no doubt about it. So don't feel bad if you don't have bins. You can make a lot on retail. I have a question for Luke, and this is going to be something I know a lot of you that don't have bins are going to be interested in. Why do you think North Carolina or any in particular part, Oregon's a very good one, Florida's kind of good as well. Why do you think we have such good thrifting markets? What do you think causes that? Uh, so I actually think it's really simple. I, I think that I mean, I've had a lot of discussions with people about this. When you have a market where the donations exceed what they can handle, the prices stay low and they're easy to source. When you have a market that's no longer growing and the donations are enough they can keep up with, then they start marking them up because they have time to mark them up to maximize the value. Like it becomes a supply and demand thing. Right now, Charlotte has 20,000 new people moving there every single year. Right, that's a fact. The city is growing in leaps and bounds. I mean, you can't drive a block without seeing something that was demolished and being rebuilt or a plot of land being developed. Like it's just everywhere. So right now they're getting more donations they can handle. So everything's gonna be flat price, get it out the door. We don't have space for it. So it's a amazing thrifty market. Whereas if I go to upstate New York where I used to live, mm -hmm. right? It's a dying economy. It's an old manufacturing area where I grew up in. So their donations are a lot less. They try to maximize every single one they get in the door and get top dollar for it. And so you, you, it's just not as conducive of an environment. And I think, I mean, you're kind of like a middle ground, right? Like I feel like Florida's still, there's parts that are growing, there's parts that aren't. But on the right. whole, it's an up economy. So you're kind of in the middle. So go ahead. It is. It is. Yeah, it is. And, and I, I would say that like the growing city thing for you, and, and the Carolinas are big. Uh, Arkansas got big for a while, Tennessee, because – they were kind of rural and people realized that what they got for their money was way more than what they got outside of it. So they moved to those areas, Hot Springs, Arkansas, Charlotte, North Carolina, Raleigh, North Carolina, um, uh, uh, Kentucky, Louisville, Kentucky, all were big up markets like real estate. I follow real estate pretty, pretty closely and all those markets went up. Like people were getting stuff for super cheap and the amount of people moving into them were huge. And so obviously an increase in population is going to equal to an increase in donations, which is going to equal to us making a lot of money and being rich, um, hopefully. Um, but uh, I know a few people in Buffalo, in New York, and yeah. uh, they have told me that they see everybody moving out. Yeah. So I've and heard, that's, yeah. That's upstate, that's upstate for sure. Yeah. And so I've heard, so Raj, so I've been gone for two years. Rochester in upstate New York is still kind of booming. It's like in a little bubble, I guess. 
Um, Syracuse is kind of hit or miss, but then the rest of the state's pretty much struggling. I mean, it's a lot of old manufacturing, and yeah, Buffalo is is it's taken a while to catch up, right? Yeah, like it's, Buffalo, Buffalo. The the person I know in Buffalo has said that like every house on the street is for sale. People have left. There's so many rent, and so that's kind of the down. So if you live in a city, the, the I guess the point is here. If you live in a city that's on the upswing, you should have ultimate opportunity to buy stuff. Right. Um, and and here in Florida, we have a weird economy. Florida is kind of the off thing because remember we have a ton of retirees. People come here and, and end up here, so we have an artificial inflation of people. Right. Um, and we have kind of three different markets. We have the tourist market, which is Orlando, West Palm, that area. We have the we're rich and we're poor, like there's no in between Miami, Fort Lauderdale, South Florida. And then we have my area. I live in Tampa and our area is the business. Everybody here is 25 to 35. They're professional, they're business, they're moving in. They are donating stuff. Our market is up because everybody here is they're either on the verge of being rich or they think they're rich and so they just give stuff away and you walk into some of these thrift stores and we have tons of people moving here. Everybody wants to live in Florida. The other thing people are realizing living in Florida is they don't want to live in the tourist section of Orlando. It's terrible traffic. It's terrible congestion. It's terrible. They inflate all the prices because tourists. Nobody wants to live in Miami, Fort Lauderdale, Fort Myers because it's super expensive. Because you know a house with a thousand square feet is like eight million dollars. Here is where you want to live: Tampa Gulf Coast. You got reasonable prices, you got reasonable people, and you have the lesser of the heat. Over in Orlando, it's hot as hell. You sweat to death. Here we have the Gulf Coast and the wind. So this is a up and coming area, and we have all the donations. So if you live in an up and coming area, you live in Charlotte, you live in uh, Savannah, Atlanta, Georgia, you live in. Um, like the D.C. area, even though it's expensive, is up and coming. People are moving to Richmond, Raleigh, uh, North Carolina. They live in Richmond. They live in Alexandria. They live in uh, the D.C. suburbs, which is where I come from. I used to live there. That's mm -hmm. still an up and coming area. Huge. I know several resellers that live in D.C. They do very, very well. Um, I know somebody in the uh, Silicon Valley. They live in Santa Clara. All upcoming cities. If your city's on the rise, you have opportunity. So don't forget that. Just completely agree with you Casey and I, I'm gonna actually I'm gonna plug here so Tino is in the uh, chat so Tino the soul advisor he is a wealth of information on shoes the yes. guy is incredible the business he has and he lives in uh, Texas so he's in the, like the middle of the country and so he, he's just kind of commenting on you know just Chattanooga and being a decent thrifting area but I just want to shout him out because he's an incredible wealth of knowledge he has shared so much with me and Jason and Chris like I can't thank him enough so check out his channels the soul advisor and then I asked to come full circle. Some people are talking about upstate New York and the difference. Your <laughs> Buffalo is Western New York versus Central, et cetera. You are absolutely right. I just being from, I'm close to Ithaca, New York is where I'm from, or Cornell is. Ithaca, like, okay. right? So when you tell someone you're from New York and you live in the South, the first thing they think is that you're from New York City. So all I say is <laughs> upstate New York to differentiate myself so they understand I'm not from yeah. New York City. So yeah. when I say that, don't confuse. I'm not trying to disrespect anyone in the areas of New York. Like, I totally get it. But when I'm down here, I'm talking to someone from the South, I have to say upstate. Otherwise, I think I'm like Brooklyn, New York. Where's your accent? I don't understand. Like, Do they treat you different? Uh, no, not at all, actually. The South is – the hospitality down here is incredible. And I've actually heard a couple of jokes that, like, down here in the South, it's like they don't insult you to the face. They insult you when they're done talking to you. They're really nice <laughs> to your face. And so I've heard that joke a couple of times, and it's pretty funny. But no, did you do? Did you do any? Awesome. Did you do any uh, in town thrifting or, or anything like that when you were up there? Like, did you ever go to New York City and? Oh, uh, so not in New York City, but when I was in upstate, I mean, I started my resale business when I lived up there. So, I mean, I it was brutal. You had to get every half off day you could find because it was the only way it was affordable. To, to a lot of competition. So, a lot of a lot of competition. Really poor economic area. Not a lot to pick from. I mean, coming down here was night and day. It was probably the best decision I've ever made. So that's awesome. If anybody's new to the channel for Luke and, and I'm invading his channel, we're almost at 150 uh, people Listen. watching, by the way. So uh, thank, you. thank you. Yeah. Thanks to everybody who's here. It's awesome. Um, and there's only 85 of you that press like. So please just listen right below Luke's handsome face is a like <laughs> button. It's a big thumbs up. You just press that. It turns blue. It works wonders. I promise you. Um, 
Bray's in New York City said there's no subway in Florida. Yeah, no, no subway. You can't you can't dig holes in Florida. You sink. Trust me. Um, but uh, so I, I was mentioning there was a few friends I had that lived in Buffalo, and uh, yep. they are actually in the thrifting game. They go to like New York City. They try to go into New York City and buy stuff, and they tell me how bad it is. And I'm like, are you serious? And they're like, it's terrible. Like we go to New York City for a weekend, and we we try to go thrifting while we're there. And they're like, do you know anybody? And I'm like, yeah, you know, I know this guy that moved from New York to you know North Carolina, and. I'm sure it's night and day, and so they, they give me this, like, it's terrible, we're, we're spending $30 on a t-shirt, and I'm like, you guys got to figure out a different way. <laughs> yeah, you're not sourcing there. It's funny you bring that up, so the, the bulk purchase that I'm going to do a video on later this week, for sure, um, is actually, they're located in Brooklyn, so where it's coming from, <laughs> so it's pretty funny you say that. Surprise. <laughs> yeah, but probably more of a warehouse type thing. But in any case, it is 11.04. For those of you who don't know, I'm an old man. All right. I go to bed at like 9 15, 9 30. Um, I mean, I feel like an old man. I also wake up early, which I haven't been lately. Sorry, guys. I he doesn't been. work on Sundays. He's lying. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's not true. <laughs> that's not true. Tomorrow's going to be a big work day. So now I have to prepare my storage unit for my belt purchase. So this is going to be tomorrow's going to be a big day. Um, you, but you, it, sir, you, sir, are more ambitious than me. <laughs> I'm a bit ambitious. It could be a huge mistake. I don't know. We're going to find out. No so let, I, honestly, do we have any last minute questions? I want to wrap up here. I want to be respectful of Casey's time. I asked him on a whim to come on here. I super appreciate that he joined us. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I uh, actually, Shannon is hanging out with some friends right now, and I have to go pick her up here in a minute. Um, oh, so I have to before we leave. I have to yell at Luke over one thing. We don't disagree. We don't disagree on much, but I have to disagree. You didn't tell me Shannon had a YouTube channel, by the way. <laughs> well, in my defense, you didn't ask. That's true. I did All not right. ask. Fair enough. Right. However, Luke, Luke's wonderful <laughs> fiance Shannon has a YouTube channel that is uh, uh, Shannon on a mission. Yep. And uh, I have been watching her videos. I watched several of them uh, night before last. So uh, yeah, uh, thanks for letting me on that secret. <laughs> we got a really <laughs> embarrassing plug out of it for one of Casey's live videos. So that's what he's referencing right now. It was pretty enjoyable, actually. I was watching. <laughs> it was funny. I was laughing. Um, it was. Shannon, Shannon came on my left hand, so she does have a channel. <laughs> yes, she does. Definitely check it out. If I plug it, it's weird, but when Casey plugs it, it's cool. So it's, No, it is cool because me and Shannon got it. You know, we, she, hasn't, she hasn't talked to my fiance yet, so I imagine that'll turn into a whole other thing. But Shannon's channel was awesome. Her videos are good. She's a natural behind the camera, by the way, just FYI. Yeah, I mean, she shows me up pretty hard. We did a hardcore. We did a video like together, and it was like my viewer count for a live on the middle of the week was like double. And I was like, oh, it's, it's because Shannon's on the video, and she actually yeah, knows what that, she's talking about. Cool. Yep. This one, this one comes on the channel. It's like, boop. Yep. All right, can we can you push Casey out of the camera view for a minute? <laughs> yeah. I agree. But I promise you guys, we're not gonna hold you up any longer. I, I yes. promise you guys, when Luke and Shannon come to Florida, they're literally forty-five minutes away. I will be there, and whether they want it or not, they're being filmed. So yes, oh, absolutely, live videos, thrifting videos, and probably some nighttime fun life videos. So you'll get all three. <laughs> we'll, we'll label it PG PG thirteen, and yeah, only watch maybe. if you've had a few drinks. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> uh, well, I'm going to wrap up here. Thank you guys so much. This is the most live viewers I've ever had. I appreciate you guys stopping in. Please go subscribe, Rockstar Flipper, for the two of you. Like I said before, that aren't subscribed, go check out his channel. <laughs> Uh, we will be live 8.30 on Monday on Prof Sales channel. It'll be myself, Casey, Chris from 10K on the Bay, and Jason. It'll be an awesome video, some pretty unique content. Stop by and join us. And uh, besides that, guys, have a great weekend. Enjoy your Easter. Unplug. Enjoy your family. And uh, don't fret about those sales being slow. They will pick back up. All right, guys. Thank you, Anything guys. Anything else, Casey? Yeah, no, that's Good. it. Thank you, guys. Have a great Easter. We'll see you next time. All right, take care, guys.